rise again to be assembled in this sanctuary so that we may praise, worship, thank you for your goodness and mercy. We thank you for your protection upon our lives and we give you the glory because you deserve the glory. We thank you because of this opportune time. Even we thank you for your presence with us at this point in time when we so much desire for you to walk with us. We pray that you may hold our hands, open our understanding and help us to hear what you want us to hear. Help us to see what you would want us to see. Help us to walk in the walk that you would want, the path that you would want us to pass. We thank you, Jehovah God, for all this that you have brought in your sanctuary. Prepare our hearts and our mind so that as your word come for the Lord, it will speak to us. Let this word be not be just another word for another son, but we pray this word will be a word that you bring a difference to our lives, to our ministry, to our families, even to the kingdom of God. I thank you for every young man, every lady and gentleman in this place, oh God. We thank you for you are with us. And we invite your presence again in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's get seated. I once again want to take this opportunity to welcome all of us in the presence of God. And uh, in this house that is called by the name of the Lord. And as we uh, sit down to listen to the word of God today, the Lord has prepared our prayers. And I've told the Lord to give me a word that is going to touch and reach each one of us. And I thank God because. We are in his presence and he does not break his heart, he does not speak in vain. And therefore I welcome you in the presence of the Lord, even as we sit to hear of his holy ghost. I have been doing a series on fighting the good fight of faith. And today I feel I want to conclude this. And uh, my emphasis today, I will give the title of my message today is Finish Well. Praise the Lord. Can you say finish well? Finish well. And uh, our text has always been in, uh, in two verses which I will remind you, it is first Timothy chapter 6, verse number 12. First Timothy chapter 6, verse number 12. Never get tired of repeating the word of God several times because my intention always is not just to speak, but the reason why you find me repeat mind such that even if you do not remember very many things you will always remember this verse and first Timothy chapter 6 verse number 12 it says let's all it together one to go fight the good fight of faith take hold of the eternal life to which you are called when you have you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Shall we read First Timothy chapter 6, verse number 12 again? And just read it and, and give it a little bit more bread. Okay. One to go. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life to which you are called 
when you make your confession in the presence of many witnesses. Then let's turn to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 7. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 7. This has been our lead text. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 7. And we're going to read together again. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 7. One, two, go. I have fought the good fight of faith. I have finished the race. I have kept faith. Now there are this in store for me. The crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to who have longed for his appearing. I want us to read it again in the name of Jesus. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse number 7. Want to go once more time? I have fought the good fight of faith. I have finished the race. I have kept faith. Now there are this in store for me the cloud of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge will award to me on that day, not only to me, but also to all who have not for his appearance. Thank you very much. So we have been doing this series of fighting the good fight. And Paul says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept faith. And the desire of each one of us today is to fight the good fight. Not only to fight every street, like we used to fight when we were boys, but it is to fight the good fight. And the good fight is fought with an aim. It is not an aimless battle. So the battle that we are fighting is a battle with a reason, with a purpose, and therefore it is a good fight. And that's why we are saying, Paul said, I have fought the good fight. Then he says, I have finished the race. Our desire is to fight the good fight. And after we have fought, we finish the race. We are not only going to fight, but we are also going to finish. The fight that we are fighting is like a race. The fight that we are fighting is like a race. And we want to finish the race. And when I was preparing this, I was remembering our, the, the, our celebrated athletes. I hope you all remember our our celebrated athletes. Can you remember his name? The guy who did 42 kilometers? Do you know his name? He's called who? Kipchoge. He led 42 kilometers. He wanted to conquer the race and to finish it. And how many minutes? He was to finish it under two, two hours. He was to finish under two hours for the new kilometers. And he prepared, before he went to do that race, he prepared and he invested a lot of time, he invested a lot of strength, he invested a lot of money. In fact, the world, even the people who sponsored him, they invested millions of money because they wanted him to conquer the race, to finish the race. They prepared other people who are called base centers, the people who are going to learn together with them. And the base centers were not necessarily were to learn with them, but they were not meant to finish the race. They were only base setters, they were encouragers. 
people who are going to walk with him so that he does not reduce his speech or cut uh, his pace. So the pace setters were placed there so that they can encourage him to keep the momentum. And uh, therefore, Kipchoge went there, not a pace setter, but he went there to conquer the lace. Praise the Lord. So in this place that we are learning, we are not pace setters. We have come to finish the race. Hallelujah. Can you say I have come to finish the race? I am not a pace setter. I have come to finish the race. And therefore, we saw this man, he lay, he lay. In fact, he shed a lot of weight so that by the time he comes to the track, he is ridden. He was ridden with, with the boots, with the light boots for the track. Kipchoge had an experience for those who know Kipchoge. There was one time he lay and his uh, shoe, uh, sorrow, started coming out. Can you remember that? He then, of course, he finished that race. But he was disturbed by his soul because his soul started coming out as he lay. Therefore, when he came to conquer this race, the 42 kilometers, he was ready to conquer it. And I believe he had checked his boots well. Praise the Lord. Can you do this? Check your boots. Tell the next, the person next to you. Agaria putzako kama ni nzuri. Are your boots well tied? Are they well fitted? Yes, he has to prepare his boots well. He has to prepare his kids well. The ones that he was to use. And therefore, when he came to the track, he came to finish the race. And Paul is saying, I have fought good fight of faith. I have finished the race and my desire even as I live for the Lord and as I minister is to conquer to fight the good fight of faith and to finish the race and this should be the prayer of every Christian to finish well to finish well and finish strong praise the Lord shall you just lift up your hand and say God help me to finish well and strong say help me to finish well and strong and this is very important and after finishing how do you finish strong Paul is saying that the formula of finishing strong is keeping faith he said I have kept the faith Praise the Lord. And therefore, may the Lord help us to fight the good fight of faith and finish the race. Today I want us to take a little bit of time and look at Paul himself. And uh, when you look at Paul from verse number 6 there, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number, number 6, and he is saying, Verse number six, for I am already poured out like drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. Paul was saying the next that he has he, he has been learning, he said he has like been like been poured out like drink offering. I, I don't know whether I, I look at this, I look at Paul like the way all of us use a toothpaste. How many have, uh, have, have, been, have paid attention to their teeth this morning? Did you, take, did, did you take, pay attention to your teeth this morning? What did you use? Did you use a toothpaste? Isn't it? If you have a colgate or a cross, and when you are using it, 
I am, I am one of those people who like using toothpaste. And anytime I am using toothpaste, I like starting from the bottom. I split and said nicely. And even members of my family, if they just hold it anywhere, and I when I go to it, I come in a kebisha vizuri na imina ili yende ikisha vizuri. And sometimes I get frustrated when I fight kila mungu wa naipoda kila mahali. But I like it when you squeeze it from the bottom up. And Paul was, was saying, I have been poured out like a drink over it. And I look at Paul as that to the best. Ame miminua. Sema kumiminua. Kumiminua. Adikua ame miminua. Kama to the best. Na sasa aliona ya kwamba ni kana kwamba amefika mwisho. And he says, I am already poured out like drink over him. And the time of my departure is near. He felt he has been poured out. He was like being sacrificed. What they used to do in those ancient times, they used to pour drink like, uh, like an opening and they could pour it probably on the altar or on town somewhere. And therefore Paul was feeling, in other words, was saying, I've already been sacrificed enough and I've been poured out like a drink over it and my time is near. And then verse number 7 he says, I have fought the good fight of faith. I have finished the race. I have kept faith. And this was poured. He was poured like drink over him. He, he fought his battle well. And all of us, as we sit, as you sit and listen to me, you have started the race. And you have started the race to finish it. Praise the Lord. And it is my prayer at the end you will say like Paul, I have been poured out like a drink over it. And the time of my departure has come. I want to finish strong. All of us would want to finish well. And when I was thinking about this, in our Christian life or in life, we start many races. There are many things that we have started. There are those that have gotten married. You are already in your marriage. You would want to finish well. It is upon you to work out on your marriage and you pray. God, you have given me, you have brought me into this marriage. You have brought me into this relationship. Help me to finish well. And it is the desire of every couple to see that they have kept their marriage to the end. So even as we talk about our, our fight and we say in our marriage life, it is also like a nation. I've been married now for, I think that, uh, that, 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 uh, that one year, it is a nation that I started those many years. And I still work for it. I still work out so that I may finish well. And I pray for my marriage. I pray for my spouse. I try to do everything that is possible to keep that marriage. Because it is not easy to keep a marriage. To live with a person, another adult. For life, accommodate all her mistakes. She accommodate all my mistakes. And we were born by different mother. We were brought up in different environment. So there are, there are all those things that brings, that, 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 that makes us not very compatible. But the desire of every couple, the desire of every Christian is to keep that marriage to the end is to keep 
that relationship to the end. And therefore, it is a fight. It is a fight. That relationship is a battle. And I'm not going to promise you it is an easy journey. But the Lord has promised a safe learning. Hallelujah. You know when I talk of a safe learning, I once landed in Jumbo Kenyatta Airport with an Ethiopian airline. And uh, that, 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 that airline was a bit bumpy. Even when we left Ethiopia and we came. I don't know what was happening with Ethiopia daily. And when we were just suffering around the, the airport and we were, we were just preparing to land. The pilot was, I think he was not very experienced and the way he was bringing down the plane was not very comfortable. And he 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 was not very comfortable. Now tell the buyer how you work. At the 
a lot of energy to an extent that one day I was driving home and I was so very tired. And as I was driving and I was in a traffic in a traffic jam, I just slept and I'm on the wheels. Thank God. Ganyang will require a crash in the way that he is. There was no injury. His car did not have any dent. But I was tired. Education consumes money, time. And that thing is your energy. Anything good, you will have to work for it a lot of time, a lot of energy of the body. You have to be strong. You have to be little, even to spend time. Even in our Christian faith, it will cost you something, but you must finish. Praise the Lord. Can you look at someone and tell them, finish well? Today we are talking about finishing well. It is not going to be easy, but we have been called to finish. In your Christian faith, you have been called to finish. You have no option. You must finish. Joseph had no option. He had to finish. Everybody was waiting for him to finish the race. Even his wife was waiting. He was not waiting in the middle of the, of the track, but she was waiting at the end. She wanted to embrace him as a winner, not as a loser. And our Lord Jesus Christ is waiting for us. There is, the Bible says there is a crowd that is waiting for each one of us. Praise the Lord. And that is what Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 8. He says, now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have wronged for his appearance. There is something that is kept ahead of us. Praise the Lord. So, you are going to finish the race. We are going to finish the race. It might be expensive. It might be time consuming. But the Lord has promised to carry us through. And this is Paul. He says, I have finished the race. And we are going to finish it. And this is the desire of each one of us. There are several things that I would want you to look at very fast. And I'm just going to, to mention them in the life of Paul when, when he was fighting this, 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 this race. And there are several things you will find in the life of Paul. Now, as he was fighting the good fight of faith, one, he, he kept, he was a man of integrity and character. He was a man of integrity and character. And if you do not mind, you can go to the book of Acts and I will give you some texts that you will read and you will read probably, I did not read necessarily read, but you can do it for your Bible study. In Acts chapter 20, verse number 17, Acts chapter 20, verse number 17, from Meritus, Paul said to Ephesus, for the elders of the church. When they arrived, he said to them, you know how I, if I lived the whole time I was with you. From the first day I came into the province of Asia. So you will find Paul is saying, you know yourself, you are a witness of my life. I have kept, Paul 
was man of integrity. So the Lord is calling for integrity. Character. And I always talk about character in this church. Paul was not only charismatic because when you are charismatic, you perform well and you attract a lot of people. And Paul is saying, you know when I came to Meritus, from Meritus, and uh, in Ephesus, elders, you know, when, when we arrived there, you know I lived the whole time I was with you, how I lived. Therefore, he was a letter. All of us are letter to be led. You do not only to be a man of good works, but you need to be a man of character. As I said, if you are very charismatic, we say, charisma attracts you, attract people to you. But what will keep you to the end is character, because character will sustain you to the end. Praise the Lord. Can we remind ourselves this saying that I've always remembered and you say charisma attract, character sustains. Can you say that? Charisma attract, character sustains. So Paul was man of character and he is telling them, you know me, how I lived the whole of my time I was with you. I was man of character. The second thing we find with Paul he was a man that was uh, full of humility. He was a man who was humble. Humility. He was humble. First number 19. In first, 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 first number 19. I served the Lord with great humility and with tears and in the midst of severe testing. Yes. By the prod of my Jewish opponent. So Paul, he served with a lot of humility. You know that I have not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you. But you have taught, I have taught you public. So what Paul is saying, he was a man that is humble. And when we talk of humility, true humility is not seeing ourselves less than what uh, what we we, 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 are, we are. Later, it is a confident affirmation of who God has made us to be in Christ and in ministry and the ministry that he has given us. So when we talk of humility, humility is not self, we call it self abasement you try to put yourself down so that you may look humble but humility is not seeing yourself it's not belittling yourself it's not seeing yourself less but it is being confident in what you are doing and therefore if God has given you ministry do it humbly serving the Lord and Paul says I serve with humility with tears in the midst of testing and the prod sometimes we are humbled by what we go was humbled by what we went through sometimes you are tested sometimes people will test you but you stand you don't throw up the times you don't give up but you continue to persist. Something else that we find with the poor is that intimate relationship, Acts chapter 20, 2020. And he says, you know that I have not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you, but have fought, have taught you publicly and from house to house. That means he maintained relationship. When I remember this act 2020, 1983, I was a young man. I started we were calling it 2020 singers and preachers. And we were going from house to house. 
We were 2020. And in fact, it was 2020. We could sit on the street. We could go from house to house. We could move from one matanga to another one. And what Paul is saying there, he maintained intimate relationship. He was with the people and in his heart with them. If you are going to finish this race, maintain relationship. What does he feel? And you remember, Paul says, I am fighting this good fight of faith. I finished the race, and there is a crown that awaits me, not only me, together with those that are called together with us. You are not alone. And therefore, maintain this relationship. And that is why we emphasize on the fellowship. We come together on we, 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 we come together to the church. You could have even listened to good preachers, even better. They are coming through your, your TVs. But you needed to come here so that you can see your brothers and sisters. You are not only looking for this good sermon, but you are also looking for a relationship. Praise the Lord. So fellowship is very important. And that is why we always emphasize don't you be alone later. There are people who live alone. They are never known. They, nobody knows where they live. Nobody knows where they sleep. Even if you sleep in a cave, just invite us there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Invite us there. Let us know you. Let us let's know where you live. When I was one, I was once in the choir. When we were we were young people in one or in the, in one of uh, in Burubur. and we had one gentleman who was praying our guitar very nicely, but he used to live very far away. He used to tell us I live the other side of the city. He was a very good guitarist and he could lead us in the choir, but he was mysterious. Nobody knew him. Nobody knew where he slept. Nobody knew his friends. And this, this man has a, a, a long story. There was some time he was taken by a, an, an artist who came from Tanzania and uh, took away with the, him. Alikuwa mwanamke. Kaenda nani? Kini badaya kateseka sana akaluti. We kind of rehabilitated him and we brought him to the church. When he came to the church, he continued to be mysterious. At the end of the day, this man did not finish well. He died early. Because we want, even when some people came to escort him when he was given uh, somebody they called him abroad. And when he was at the airport, he came with a wife with the two kids, and nobody knew that he had the two kids. He was that mysterious. He, had, he was already married with the two kids. Navastana Malikovana, when I sat around him, they thought this is a good candidate. Of uh, Hawaii. But by then we discovered that by then I was a pastor. I was told, Do you know that your member has a family? He lived a careless life and eventually he died. He died at it. And after he died, he died. He died. He died. So there are people who will waste their life because they do not have, they are not accountable to anybody. When you are in a fellowship, it means you are accountable. If you don't want a fellowship, it means you don't want to be accountable to anybody. You don't want anybody to know you. We need fellowship. You need to be known by people. And that's why I emphasize, if you are young, pick a person. Be known by other young people. If you are a lady, be known by other ladies. If you are a man, be known by other men. Let them know you. I usually read pastors and I, and I tell them, we are going to face it every time. We want those churches where we, can, we have hope and where we can park our cars. But I, I ruled out and I said, we are going to follow those people who follow us. 
Even if your church does not have a toilet, we shall come to that church. And people are very happy. We started to go going to very small churches. Na kuna wakati moja nilienda nikatafuta ni kasema nitafutiwe choo ili ili kuwa inashirikana sana. Ninataka mkubwa anataka choo na haipatikani lakini tuli tuliomba kwa nini na nikaenda kwa choo. But we said we are going to visit we shall be with those people who are with us. Relationship is very important. Bwana asifiwe. Paul said I was with you. I did not hesitate to preach anything that would be helpful to you. Acts 2020. I taught publicly and from house to house. So he had that intimate relationship. Another thing we find in the in the life of Paul is he preached the message of repentance and faith. Acts 21. I have declared both to Jewish and Greek that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's continue to preach because this is our gospel. His message was clear of repentance of people turning to God by faith. Another thing, number five, is that he lived life of obedience to death. Acts 20 verse number 22 and now compelled by the spirit I am going to Jerusalem not knowing what will happen to me there I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit wants me that prison and hardship are facing me Paul was ready he lived the life of obedience he was ready to pay the cost of his call. Are you ready to pay the costs? Are you ready to stand up in the midst of persecution, rejection, desertion? Because Paul was deserted many times. Paul was told many times are almost to death. But he was ready. He obeyed his call to death. Finish well. Praise the Lord. It doesn't matter what you go through. But to finish well, because there is a crowd of life that awaits ahead of you. Number six, Paul lived the life of endurance to the end. Acts 20, verse number 24. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. The task of testifying to the good news of the grace of God. This is powerful. Verse number 24. He is seen. I consider my life nothing. He endures. And enduring is the state power. He was given. He was ready to be a pain. He knew God was able to keep him and to keep his him to the end. Are you ready to start to the end? He endured the pain to the end. And he said, I consider my life nothing. And it is important for us to consider our life nothing. We have been called to finish. And Paul is saying, my only aim is to finish the race and to complete the task. Finish the race, complete the task, whatever it costs you. Because there is a cloud of light that awaits you. Number seven, Paul lived a life of proclamation of God's whole counsel. Acts 20, verse number 26. Therefore I declare to you today that I am innocent of the blood of any of you. For I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole uh, will of God. So he was ready to proclaim the whole will of God. He did not hesitate. God's proclamation. I don't know each one of us has a constituency. You have a people that look up to you. There are people that you preach to. There are people that you witness to. Are you ready to keep up? And you keep to the, to the whole council. Proclaim the God's 
then God's own counsel. He thought all well. He was ready to stand up to be counted. As a faithful soldier of Jesus Christ, and as the Bible says, he was not, he did not fear because he knew what he was preaching. Preach, I would say that get to know what you preach, what do you stand for. When you tell people that I have been given my life to the Lord Jesus Christ, when you say you are saved, what do you mean? What do you fight for? Don't fight a battle that you do not know. Get to know your faith so that you can fight for it. Paul knew what he was fighting for it. Even when the Jewish world were persecuting him because they felt like he was not faithful to Judaism, to the Jewish tradition and the religion. He knew what he was preaching and therefore he was persuaded to stand for that life. First number eight, he, Paul, lived a life of a watchman. He watched, he watched over his life. First number 28, he says, keep watch over yourself and on the throne of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseer. Be shepherds of the church of God. Watch which he bought with his blood. That means Paul was a watchman. He was like a watchman. And he did not only, he was not only a pastor because Paul was an apostle, but he also watched over his life. And that is why he is telling leaders, here he is addressing leaders and he's telling them, keep watch over yourself and the flock. Therefore, as a man of God, I also watch over my life so that I do not just escort people like Pesetas and then I do not enter. Do not only preach to people, but also watch over, over your life. God, he guarded his attitude, his affections, his motives, and his desires. He guarded, guard your attitude, guard your heart. For the Bible says it is the wellspring of life. Are you guarding? the well of your life. And the Bible says it is a spring. So watch over your life. What is your attitude towards life? So he guarded his affection and motive and desire. It is very important for you to watch over your life. Don't only live to the Lord, but also live yourself well to the Lord. Paul also was a watchman over God from this I have mentioned. He guarded uh, from he guarded the frog from destroyers. That is the Bible says. If you read uh, that, uh, uh, even from verse number that he said, let's read from verse number twenty-nine. I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you, and you will will not spare the frog, even from your own number, men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples from them. So be on your guard. Remember that for three years I never stopped warning each of you night and day with tears. That means Paul did not only watch over his life but he also watched over the frog. The problem like I said the other day one of the battles they were fighting in the first was, 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 was heresy. There was a lot of heresy. The church was born when the world was full of, full of philosophy. There were very many philosophers who had come before Christ and who were the, the, the who came before him. And there are others who came after those that like, like, like reading philosophy. You know Akina Socrates, you know Akina Prato, you know Confucius, you know all those people, Greek philosophers. And then during this time of Paul, they also philosophized the, 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 the Christian religion. 
And that it, it was at this time when they were saying that the, the spirit is good, but the matter is bad. And they were saying you can be saved when you are, your spirit is saved, it is secure, even if you sit with your body. And that is why they were saying spirit is good and, 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 the, and the matter is bad. And therefore they were talking of the security of your salvation. So even if you entangle and you contaminate with your body, you sin with your body, your spirit will, be, will not be touched. It was a philosophy of, of the people who are called Gnostics at that time. They were trying to, they were, these are the people that Paul called them suffered wolves. They were living. Others were saying there is no selection. These were among the Jewish, in the Jewish religion. religion. There were two sects. There was the, the, the sect of the priests and the other one for the Pharisees. And the priests, they did not believe in the, in the selection. These others, the Pharisees were very legalistic. And all these people were confusing the church. And Paul stood firm to defend the throne. So we are called upon even to stand firm and defend the truth that you know. You have the truth and you speak the truth and the Bible says if you know the truth the truth will, will set you free. So Paul was there to cut the frog from the destroyers. Those who wanted to defy the frog. And even today they come. They are there. We have this heritage and they preach not because they want to take people to heaven, not be because they want people to know the Lord Jesus Christ and his saving grace, but probably some teach and preach with other motives, probably to get rich, to become famous, and all these motives. But if you know the truth, stand for that truth, preach it. Verse number 10, Paul preached the message of grace. Verse number 32, now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which uh, can build up, can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. So Paul preached the word of God of the message of grace as we know. And, and lastly, Paul lived as a servant leader. Verse number 33 to 35, and he says, I have not perfected anyone's silver or gold or clothing. You yourself know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the needs of my companion. That means, verse number 35, he says, in everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of handwork we must help the weak remembering the words of our Lord Jesus Christ himself and it is more blessed to give than to receive so Paul was not only a leader but he was also a servant leader he lived as a servant leader and that is why he said I have fought the good fight of faith I have finished the race and I have kept faith. So Paul kept faith. He is a good example of a man who fought the good fight of faith. Sometimes he was at the fight of death. There was a time even he was deserted by one of his, his very close companion called Damas. He kind of betrayed him and he deserted him in the field. And once in a while, you shall be deserted. But I pray that the Lord will keep you and you will finish well. Today, my message is finish well. Praise the Lord. Whatever you have started, finish well. Finish well. Finish well. He said, I have fought a good fight of faith. When I was saying Paul was decided by this guy in 2 in Timothy chapter 4 verse number 10 he says uh, do your best to come 
to me quickly. This time he was deserted, verse number nine, for Demas, because he loved this world, uh, has deserted me and has gone to the Salonika. He deserted him. He left him. And therefore, Paul needed the service of this man, but when he needed him most, he deserted him. But we must say, Paul finished the least well. I want to finish with a story. It is a very sad story in the Bible. And I want you to go and read it and read it for yourself. If I had all the time, I would bring at the story. This week I've been reading the story of and how they finished. I was sure how he started and when he was old, he called people and he said, with me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. I looked at somebody like Saul, how he came to power and ruled for many years, but he finished in a very bad way. In fact, he committed suicide and it was, a, 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 he is not a very good example. I was looking at the life of David. The David was a good man and the Bible says he was God and he was man after God's own heart. God loved him. But when you look at the life of David, it was full of ups and downs. Sometimes he murdered, he committed adultery, but he repented and he went back to the Lord. But we see David died at good old age. In fact, I like what the Bible says in the book of Acts, that he died in good old age and he was gathered to his forefathers. And therefore, he finished the strong in spite of the men he came through. He sinned but he repented. You can sin and repent. But you should know that sin has consequences. When you sin, although God will forgive you, there are consequences of sin because of the way Paul and David sinned. His children had to inherit some of the uh, some of his bad behavior, and they had even to 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 suffer the consequence of sin because the Bible says whatsoever a man soweth that shall, shall he reap. And you remember, his son took his wives and he was sleeping with his wives in public. He slept with the wife of Uriah in, in secret but he was displayed in the public. Then after that you find that in the life of David's children there was murder, a lot of murder Absalom murdered Am Amnon. Amnon uh, just, just abused his sister. And you find there are a lot of things that happened in, in David's lineage because of his sin. And uh, therefore, God can forgive you, but sometimes you live with the consequences. And that is why we need to pray very hard. Even in our lives, sometimes we suffer and you are seeing you, you can even pass some of the consequences to your generation unless the Lord interferes with that kind of lineage. And that is why if you are born in a polygamous, polygamous family and you are, 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 you are family is dogged by this kind of a behavior of polygamy, people who do not keep marriage as a child of God, you can be determined to start a farm. Then you cut that kind of a link. Ikiwa wakuenu kumekuwa na prostitution na drunkenness, if you start a farm, you will change the story of your generation. When God called Abraham, Abraham, his fathers, his, uh, his people, but God separated them. And therefore, you need to live a separated life so that you may interfere with that kind of consequences that follow a seed in your family that can change 
destroy. Praise the Lord. And you say, I am a seed. Of my family, right here. So you can take the story. You can take in your family. Therefore, it is very important. I'm talking about those people. They finished well. David finished well and strong. He, he finished well. There is there are, there are all those people you can talk about Joseph. How he started in a very humble way. He finished well. Even Jacob finished well. And he finished by blessing his, his children. Calling all his children and blessing them. How I pray. By the time I will be very old. I will be calling my children and blessing them. I don't like how Noah, a man that was used by God to save his family. Then after he was blessed and planted find out. Then he, 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 he made a brewery of, 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 of the blessings of the Lord. And this made him cast his seed. May God help us that the Lord, the, the blessings of the Lord may not bring sorrow to my generation. Because the Bible says, the blessings of the Lord make it rich and added no sorrow. But the blessing of the Lord that was bestowed upon this man of God called Noah brought a curse upon him. He blessed him. Because if you are not careful with the blessings of the Lord, you may not finish strong. You may not finish well. May God help us to finish well. Hallelujah. Can you look at somebody and say, today we are talking about finishing well. Finish well. Happy about to we Finish well. Finish well. Finish well. Najua siku hizi hakuna hai five kama ni wakati tunaomba ya kwamba corona ishe haraka tuendelee na high five. Wakati wana wana miss high five. Are you missing high five? Yes, start to get sama finish well. Finish well, finish well. Lakini watu wengine watasema we are finishing with the corona. But what do we want to say? Finish well. Praise the Lord. We want to finish well and strong. Blessing our families. We want to be a blessing to our family. I want to finish well and be a blessing to this ministry, to this church of the full gospel, to this family of the full gospel churches of Kenya. Praise the Lord. Pray that God will you become a seed in this in this answer, in this family. And people will remember you of the good and the great things that you did. How you affected the life of their children. How you affected the life of their family. Because we are a seed. And I want to say, in this seed that is you, there is a forest of blessing. Praise the Lord. Because in every seed, there is a forest. So in you, there is a deposit. And that's why when God blessed Abraham, he told him, I'm going to make you a blessing. And you will be a blessing to all generations, to all the nations of the earth. How I pray, when you finish well, you become a blessing to the nations of the world. Praise the Lord. Are you ready to be a blessing? Are you ready to be a blessing? Finish well. Finish well. Abraham finished well. And uh, he completed. I can talk of these very many people that we read in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. They are called heroes of faith. They finished well and strong. Some were prophets. Others were apostles. Others, even the record, we don't have enough record. But finish well. But there is a sad story. I would want us to, to read. But let this be, we are going to take it positively. And if you get time, you can read it on your own. Second Chronicles chapter 24. And I think it is not very, very long. I think it is not very long. How many minutes can we read chapter 24? How many people? 
Nana anaweza kusoma haraka sana. This this no one to complete with the, this story. Or I can just give you an outline of this of this. We are coming across a gentleman called Joas here. In 2 Chronicles chapter 24. The Bible says Joas was seven years old when he became a king. And he lived in Jerusalem for 40 years. His mother's name was Zibiaya, and she was from Beersheba. Joas did, did what was right in the eyes of the Lord all the years of Jehoiada, the priest. Jehoiada chose two wives for him, and he had two sons and daughters. And sometimes later, Joas decided to restore the temple of the Lord. Let me give you an outline of the whole of that, and I want you to go and read, read it. So, this man became a king when he was seven years old. And uh, he was a well-known person. And the reason why, probably when he became a king, he was actually inherited from uh, from from his father and he was well known uh, his mother was also well known and where he came from was known and the bible says he lived for 40 years mutu aki ogoza inti miaka arubaini even in kenya when moi uh left this child then this country for 24 years we thought it was too long but george Led the, the, the land uh, Judah for 40 years. 40 years. There is good news there. He was mentored by a priest called Johai Joho Yanda. So Joho Yanda. And I think because he was very young and he was a king, this priest is the one who went out and looked for a wife for him. Wakati ule, hakukuwa na shida mtu wakeweza kupata wake wawili Lakini wakati huu, usiwe na, na priest ata kupa wake wawili But to find out, give Joas two wives And he was blessed with two sons and daughters So, there is good thing with, with this man called Joas He restored the temple of the Lord And he did a very good thing and um, you, if you go to first number 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 five, the Bible says he called together the priests, the priests and the Levites, and said to them, Go to the towns of Judah and collect the money due annually from all Israel to repair the temple of your God. And do it now. And the Levites did it at once. And you can see, you can continue and see that verse number seven, uh, the sons of the wicked woman Adariah had broken into the temple of God and they had used it, even the sacred object. So he restored the beauty of the temple. And this is a good thing that he, he did. But when his mentor, the priest who was called the Winder, died, and who died at the age of 130 years. When Johanna died, this man called Joash, there were some officials who came to him and became his mentors. And these officials, they, 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 they made Joash abandon the temple and uh, he built an Asherah pole uh, for idols through the bad artifacts from the officials of Judah. Then there is the son of Johanna who was called Zachariah. Zachariah was son of this priest. He came and prophesied against what Joash and the officials were doing. And what Joash did, he killed Zachariah. But when Zachariah was dying, he cast them. And what was the end of George? Verse number 24, verse number 24, you can see, although the Armenian then, because let me go back to verse number 22, the king, George, did not remember the kindness of Zachariah's father, Johanna, had shown him, but killed his son, 
who said as he may die, may the Lord see this and call you to account. At the, the turn of the year, the army of Abad marched against Joas in defeated Judah at Jerusalem and killed all the leaders of the people. They sent all the plunder to their king in Damascus. And note verse number 24, although the Aramean army had come with only a few men, the Lord delivered into their hands as much larger army because Judah had forsaken the Lord, the God of their ancestors. Judgment was executed on Joas. And if you go down, you'll find that Joas was severely wounded and his officials conspired against him for murdering uh, because of what he did to the son of Joah. And we find that Joas was, was killed by some of these people where he was in bed, wounded. He finished badly. He is a man who ruled for 40 years. He restored the temple. And the Bible, when you look at those people who did the, the kings, the, the kings who did good and the good kings, he was one of the good kings of Israel, but he finished in a very bad way. And he died badly. I don't know even how he was buried. So my emphasis today is that finish well. Praise the Lord. Finish well. Finish well. Stand up on your feet. My message today. I was concluding our message on fighting the good fight of faith. And in fighting the good fight of faith, may God help us to finish well and be strong. There are people who start very well like Joas, but they finish very badly. We have many kids that started well and they finish badly. You can be blessed, but you finish in a bad way. Samson, and I'm sorry on Sunday I was mentioning Goliath instead of Samson. Wakat mi gine kitwa yangu ikiwa moto kina kina koni kuwa confused kito koni bebe. But and Samson finished badly. Although he was born a Nazarite, you are born a Nazarite, but you are born you are born to finish well. Praise the Lord. And you are not only going to finish well in your, in your Christian faith. Even in your marriage, will, you will finish well. Those that are in school, you are going to finish well. Those that are, that are in business, they are going to finish well. And they are going to do well. Whatever you are in, may the Lord give you the ability to finish well. Don't compromise. Live well. Finish well. Fear the Lord. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. Seek God. Make room for God in your life. Guard your hearts for it is the wellspring of life. Finish strong. Whatever you are doing, it might be like that flower we talk about. Or a yellow figure was, was singing about. It is picked in the midst of thorns, but it is a beautiful flower. Even the crown that we are going to receive, Paul says, I have been poured like a drink over it. Neither be me nor. May God help us. Lift up your hands. Pray for yourself. Can you whisper prayer for yourself? I don't know what you are going through. I don't know the kind of struggle that you are going through. But the struggles that you are going through are not an excuse for your compromise. It is not an, as an excuse. But the Lord will carry you to the end. The Lord will carry us to the, to the end. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands straight. I am praying for you. I don't know the kind of fight.
Nimetaka kuomba pamoja nasi kwa mkono wako tuombe tena katika jina la Yesu. Na kama bado wewe unasikia ya kwamba kuna jambo unataka tuombe. Pengine vita ile unapigana nayo ni vita ya magonjwa kusumbuliwa kupigwa na watu kunyanganywa mali ya yeah. they are beasts like what would be called the wolves that have surrounded you they want to tear you apart we want to condemn them we want to we want to chase them we want to chase those wolves we want to call upon the name of the Lord that he may fight for you we want to raise the banner of the Lord he is a mighty warrior the Bible says our Lord is a mighty warrior he is mighty in battle Yes, he is strong. Are you here? You need a very special prayer. Lift up your hand. Kama wewe uko hapa na umehitaji maombi manu, inua mkono wako tuketa kuboba na wewe katika jina na Yesu. Ninaona mikono kana. Just cast it off and then come forward here and let us pray together. Just come forward and let us pray. Kuja hapa bene, wewe na umehitaji maombi. I can see a few of you. Do not be afraid. Just be strong. Be bold enough. Come, let us pray together with you. 